listen to the noise. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to introduce Kyle Dunn, who will be talking to us about uh, GPUs and stuff like that, you know, and parallel databases and how we can make it even faster. So take it away. Thanks. So before I get started, I just kind of want to get a the pulse of the room. Is there uh, which 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 what's the distribution or who's HPC folks? In there? Okay, uh, data science okay. and big data. It's kind of old, roughly the same, but I, I like to be right in the middle, to whatever extent possible. Um, so a little bit about me. I actually work for Pivotal, and I'm I'm a data nerd, which really means. Uh, if the data scientists get to drive the Formula One car, I'm taking the road for them. So, better to have a role than not. Uh, I, at one point, was a GPGP researcher. Uh, mostly just toy problems, single nodes, you know, how can you get speed ups, how can you do approximate computing, things like that. Um, more recently, though, I've, I've self identified as the Pythonista. Python's awesome. Uh, I'm still out of my way. So, I try to use it wherever possible, which kind of seems strange given. The, the purpose of HPC, but um, that's where that's where I'll kind of introduce some new things. Um, this is this is not entirely clear even to me still, um, but I, I wanted to kind of throw it out there just to get an idea of, of um, how these different concepts are going to relate that I'm going to talk about. So in the in and I should say because of my role, I have more enterprise leanings, so I see more of like the SQL warehousing, data warehousing type of workloads. Which is pretty pretty mature. Um, what I would actually argue is is more on the rigid side than on the not rigid side or the adaptive side. Uh, SQL isn't um, it's not the most expressive way to describe your computation in my in my mind. Uh, for some people, it's perfectly clear. Um, then there's this concept of jitting. How many people are familiar with with JIT? Just in time compilation. Okay, so not okay. Fair enough. Um, and then GPGPUs is. I would argue is more cutting edge, although I think it's it's gaining popularity, so it's not it's maybe not quite as, as far out as, as some things, uh, but it's fairly rigid. You know, you have thousands of cores, but every core is executing lockstep, so you have to describe uh, you have to describe things in a way that is is massively parallel, basically. But it, it fits. I think it fits in, in certain uses. So if we see kind of how these things are intersecting and what and what I'm describing, uh, we're going to work right right in the middle in this talk. Um, but there are some other things out there that, that kind of combine two or more of these things. So MemSQL, which I haven't really looked at in any great depth, but uh, it's my understanding that it's compiling SQL into, uh, into machine code using JIT. Um, PGStrom, which is a Postgres uh, extension, is using GPUs for, uh, for in-memory joins and some other interesting things. Definitely following that project closely. Uh, and then the, the important one for this talk is Number, which is from Continuum Analytics. It's the, in the Anaconda Python distribution. And it basically is jitting Python code to be either vectorized or in, uh, or targeting a GPU or targeting a multi-core. So very, very cool library. Um, I would recommend that if you like Python and you like HPC, you check that out. Um, but in, in the context of this talk, I, I kind of want to frame it in this way of, of doing things, you know, kind of in a rigid but very parallel way on the left. Um, so this is the power room, you know, vetted a couple hundred years ago, as opposed to a room full of skilled seamstresses or, or uh, you know, uh, sewers. They're they're very uh, they can do a lot more complex tasks than say a power room. Power room is really good at doing very simple things, very wide. Uh, but you can't do like a, you wouldn't do an embroidery on, on a power room unless you know that's changed. I'm not terribly familiar with that stuff. But these things are kind of at odds in that sense, right? We have really good scale on one side, but on the other side, we have really we have the capability to do more complex things. So it'd be nice if we could kind of merge these in in one system to accomplish some interesting tasks. So on, on this side of it, this is where GPGPU fits. Uh, you you basically write some code, and that code actually has some other code contained within it that runs through this magic box, which really isn't magic at all. Um, in this case, I'm showing OpenCL, which is the open compute language. Um, you can use it to target uh, heterogeneous systems, so CPUs, GPUs, only GPUs, only CPUs. It's pretty flexible, but not quite as mature as, say, like CUDA, which is closed source. Uh, but regardless, you describe you describe your workflow. You you know initialize some memory buffers. You uh, you kind of 
create an OpenCL context, and then you write your program code, which is actually in C in this case. Uh, Numba allows you to do it with pure Python, which is even better. And then you basically assign a task to a work queue, and it gets dispatched to that device and executes. So that's kind of what this is here. So this is actually readable of that code. This is a very basic vector sum, nothing amazing here. Uh, certainly people that are more familiar with GPGPU and, and writing that code can do much more complex things uh, than this, but I think you get the idea. So that's, that's one half of the picture, and the other half is, uh, this is where MPP comes in. So a couple of examples of MPP databases, well, one, one in particular recently open source is the Green Thumb database, which is offered by, by Pivotal as well as it's uh, open source you know, available on GitHub. So you can see all the code. The basic idea is you write one SQL statement here. Uh, again, some magic happens, which really isn't magic. It's all open source, you can see it. But you basically have a master node that distributes that work out to each of these individual worker nodes, which is, this is way overblown. I don't think I would ever want to work on a cluster quite that big. But same idea, you, you know, each one of these is taking some bit of work and executing that work locally. And then ultimately, that kind of comes back as a single result set. So scatter, gather. Uh, very, I think very similar to a lot of HPC workloads. And now is the, is the point where, like, how do we merge these two things, right? So I'm, I'm basically proposing if we take some, some capabilities of GPUs and put these into each of these MVP nodes, which have hundreds on the very low end, up to thousands now for, for medium, medium priced cards, you're, you're getting a very large um, compute capability on top of what was already pretty large in either of these cases. So let, let's just step back for a second and think about how, how that fits here. So what I've basically just proposed is you write some high-level Python code. That Python code then gets dispatched to tens, hundreds, I don't think thousands is quite scalable yet, but gets dispatched to some number of nodes. Python libraries there take that code, compile it down into machine code, execute that machine code, results come back, and then all the results wind up back to the user. So that's, uh, that's pretty powerful in my mind. I mean, it's, it's uh, or not a lot of work is the other side. This is all open source software that kind of plugs together relatively easily. This is the other thing. Um, you're taking some very large set and you're getting an extra multiplicative factor on how fast you can perform work on it. Uh, and that's, you know, that's the name of the game. You don't you don't want to be waiting around for hours if you can help it to get your results back from a very basic query. Especially as your data sets grow very large, it becomes much more important. So this is kind of the, uh, this is a, a logical, sort of logical, but sort of physical view of, of what a cluster like that looks like when you put all of it together. You have a single SQL query at the top, some number of MPP nodes. Each MPP node has some shard of data. And it also has these green boxes, which I'm representing as the GPU cores, so it could be 10, 100, just depends on the hardware. But the idea is that then each of each what is already sharded data is subsetted further and is handled by one, one or more GPU cores. So this, this, again, you can see it's been kind of tried to texture coded or, or whatever we call that. Uh, it just kind of illustrates the point. So this all sounds great, um, but what are the limitations, right? That's, that's kind of the point is you, you can't just use things like this in every situation. So I want to be kind of honest about that. Things that are I.O. bound certainly are still going to be I.O. bound. This doesn't get rid of that problem at all. This is designed for um, computations that are arithmetically intensive. So you bring the data in once and you turn on it multiple times. That's where you really kind of get the maximum benefit for GPUs. Is, is in those types of situations. Uh, additionally, SIMD uh, problems. So if you have a for loop and the result, the result of the next iteration is a function of the previous iteration, then this doesn't work because that's not data parallel. There, there are some problems where you can get around that, but in general, uh, this, is, this is for SIMD type operations. And then the last bit is concurrency. So you may have many MPP nodes, but each MPP node only has one GPU unless you have a really nice cluster and you may have multiple GPUs. But you're, you won't be able to dispatch multiple users or multiple queries on the same GPU at, uh, in any given instant without paying some concurrency penalty. So I'll talk about uh, just a couple use cases. Um, I, I can't go into too much depth on this, 
but I, I, I think this is one of our um, one of our larger kind of uh, data sets that, that we've seen, not on uh, this particular, um, not using this particular method, but this might be a good application for it. So there, uh, you might you might ask a question like, um, how do I find, if I have, say, a thousand measurements in a data set that I'm collecting for, uh, say, a, a jet engine or a uh, uh, combustion turbine, I want to know something about how those measurements relate. I might do a cross-correlation. There's a lot of uh, competition involved in doing things like that. So you might apply that in this situation. Um, this, or you might apply this method in that situation where each of these different engine types are being kind of assessed uh, in parallel. This isn't a true technical representation of how this would work in, in say, Green Plum or uh, Hawk, which is the sequel on, on Hadoop implementation, but I think you get the idea. You're, you're spreading out the work, and then you're spreading out the work even further at each at each node. Um, another potential example, uh, which I think is, is somewhat interesting, this was kind of inspired from a data scientist that I ran into in, a, uh, in another in a completely unrelated field, but basically he was storing uh, picture data inside of a column, or image data rather, inside of a column in a database. So you can imagine having your database storing large numbers of pictures, which traditionally you don't think of database is a good place to store that type of content. Uh, but when you have this uh, type of compute capability, you can run things like uh, SIF or scale invariant feature transform or uh, other types of uh, compute intensive algorithms that allow you to do matching or to say, you know, how, um, to say different things about images. So if you had, say, an image of an unknown organism, you wanted to know like which cl which class of plants or something it might be nearest related to, and in some context, whether it be actual <coughs> pictures or you know some kind of microscopic imagery, you you may be able to deploy this kind of system to do that in a in a very kind of interesting way that you, you probably don't normally think of for those types of problems. Uh, the last one is is also fairly interesting, I think, um, map data, which currently is not that there's not that great of support or geospatial rather, there isn't that great of support for it in Greenplum currently, um, but that's that's being worked on more and more all the time. And it's also a very uh, data parallel problem. So you can imagine you know, the map in the background, you, you kind of chunk that up into a bunch of tiles, you spread those tiles out over all these cluster nodes, and then now you can write some kernel that, that is executing in each of those tiles to, to give you an answer very quickly without iterating. You know, basically being parallel where possible. So, uh, I think I went quite fast, but I was originally planning to have a demo. Uh, couldn't, couldn't get Amazon to behave. So, if, if you take nothing else from, from all this, uh, I, I, would, I would say this. And again, I, this top piece is, is not to bash on like making new things or making new combinations of systems to do things. Uh, but, at least in my experience, it was always the most difficult to bring your data to the computation you want to do. You do a lot of kind of maneuvering just to get things set up so you can actually run the algorithm that you benchmark or you're optimizing. And that's that's painful. So if you can if you can deliver your computation to the data rather than doing the reverse, database is already very good at that. And that's what I think um, this is kind of getting at. The second bit is, is JIT is your friend. Uh, JIT is very cool. It's uh, how many people are familiar with LLVM? GCC's not so great friend yet. It's a very very neat project. Uh, I'd, I had the fortune to work on a little bit of it. Not uh, not anything that, that made it upstream, but it's basically a, a modular compiler framework. So you have some number of, of language front ends. So whether it's you know C or C plus plus or C sharp or something, you have a common core of um, optimization routines that operate on an abstract uh, an abstract representation of the program. And on the back end, you have a target uh, system, so you can target x86, you can target PowerPC, you can tar target ARM, ARM64, you know, any architecture you want, even GPUs, I think there's some, some decent support in there for that. So it's um, it's very powerful, and that's what uh, that demo library is built on, is, is LLVM. And the last point, which I was in denial about for myself before starting this job, um, SQL does live, and people do write very powerful, uh, insanely complex SQL that I could never probably understand. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the, 
the, the nice thing is, is that we have good mature SQL parsers in Greenplum, which is based on Postgres, so it, you, you can handle that. And in fact, you might be able to empower people to do better if you give them you know, things like, like jitted PL Python functions. So that's, um, that's kind of the, the talk. I, I really, again, I was meant to have a demo. I can show some more code, too, uh, just to, so you can get an idea of how this looks when you implement it. And, that kind of thing. It's, I don't have to go into too, too much detail, but I'd, I'd much, uh, I'd be happy to take questions if anybody has those, or uh, if I'm just crazy, <laughs> any anything. So that's that's it. So how does that uh, kind of solution compare to what MapD does? MapD. Uh, the GPU GPU database. So I, I'm not familiar with um, with how they're how they architected, uh, but I know that they use GPUs pretty extensively. I don't know if they're I don't know if they're distributed. <coughs> so I think it, and again, this is just out of ignorance. I don't think they're open source, so I'm not entirely sure uh, what what the architecture looks like. But uh, PGStrom is very interesting. I think PGStrom might be very comparable to to what MapD does because I think. In, in memory joins, things like that. Any more questions? 